Ryan Blaney wins, Kevin Harvick gets disqualified, and which playoff drivers survive Talladega? Let's talk about it. Coming up next. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing good today. All right, Ryan Blaney gets win at number two on the season. He locks himself in to the next round of the playoffs, and what an absolute great finish it was. A Basically a photo finish between him and Kevin Harvick right there at the very end as he was getting pushed by his uh, brother-in-law, I guess, William Byron. So really, really cool deal. Good win for him, and it, it ends all the talk about is Penske uh, still what they were or whatever like that. So Penske answers the call people had been saying that they're you know basically out of it they don't have a chance to win you know uh, ryan blaney will be the next one out some people had ryan blaney being uh, out in the first round so penske and ryan blaney answer the bell but it was not without controversy because even though it was a great photo finish at the end of the race kevin harvick gets thrown out unsecured fasteners on the windshield not sure exactly. I mean, obviously they were going for some type of aero advantage according to NASCAR and not sure exactly what type of advantage that would cause or give you, but they are thrown out for that. So Harvick goes from finishing second to finishing dead last and that shuffles up the points. That wasn't the only drama because on the last lap, once again, several playoff drivers were caught up in a wreck when Corey LaJoy going for a spot gets into the number 36 of Riley Herbst who had a great run going, probably would have finished, you know, uh, at least top five there easily, but they got they get into each other and well the rest is history and several playoff drivers including Kyle Larson were caught up in that so there was just tons of stuff and once again this was a Talladega race where you either survived or you did not survive. Speaking of which, let's look at the top ten: the good race and the bad race. Ryan Blaney, of course, wins the race. William Byron is second, so good for him. He continues his strong playoff run. Denny Hamlin, third, also continues his strong playoff run. Corey LaJoy finishes seventh uh, after the contact with Riley Herbst there. Austin Sendrick finishes uh, fifth, so basically two top fives there for Penske. Justin Haley finishes sixth. Good run for them. They needed that one. Chase Elliott finishes seventh. Continues to be the strongest car not that did not make the playoffs, I guess I should say. He takes over the 17th spot in points. Ryan Priest in the uh, old Shake and Bake Wonder Bread car finishes 8th. Riley Herbst ends up finishing ninth. These are all, of course, bumped up one spot because Kevin Harvick did get disqualified. Riley Herbst finishes ninth in the number 36 Beast Ford, Monster Beast Ford. And Daniel Suarez in the number 99 finishes 10th. Good run there for Herbst, man. Playoff drivers Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson uh, finish 14th and 15th, respectively. That would be basically all of the good for the playoff drivers because let's go and look uh, at who, you know, finished where. Ross Chastain would have finished last if Harvick hadn't been disqualified. He ends up finishing 37th. Of course, he got caught up in a wreck when Ricky Stenhouse Jr. ran out of gas and Kyle Busch ran into Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and, well... Uh, the rest is history. It, it ruined uh, it ruined Chastain's day because he had to park it, and Kyle Busch took damage. Uh, and although he, he ran good at the end of the race, I think he was caught up in that other race, uh, in that other wreck as well. I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, Brad Keselowski here finishes 32nd. He had a good car all day, won one of the stages, but then got tangled up with Carson Hosevar, giving him a little bit uh, too aggressive of a push there, and he collects himself. So he ends up finishing 32nd. And then the aforementioned Kyle Busch, he ends up finishing 25th as well. Uh, like I said, caught up in that uh, wreck between Corey LaJoy and Riley Herbst. Bubba Wallace, 23rd. He was also, I guess, caught up in that deal as well. So let's take a look at how that shook up the points. William Byron is first in points and Ryan Blaney second in points. They both locked in to the next round via their wins. Denny Hamlin is third right now plus 50, Christopher Bell, plus 22 in fourth, plus 19 in fifth is Chris Buescher, plus 17 in sixth is Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, plus 15 in seventh, and Brad Keselowski, the last man in as it stands right now, is plus two. Then your drivers who are currently out of the next round, Tyler Reddick at minus two, Bubba Wallace and Ross Chastain uh, at minus nine and minus 10 there, and Kyle Busch is minus 26. So what that means going into the Roval is if Kyle Busch can get some basically stage points, he can significantly reduce that so he can still technically point, points race, but basically Kyle Busch 
is going to be in a win or go home situation if he can't get a whole bunch of stage points to sort of uh, even it out and make it uh, dwindle down there. Uh, and also, the other drivers can basically points race too because, you know, 10 points, 9 points, that's not completely insurmountable at 2 points in Tyler Reddick's case. So the Charlotte Roval is going to continue this wild card round of aggressive races where basically anything can happen. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out going forward. All right, that is all I got for you on this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If this is your first time to the channel, hopefully I earned your subscription today. If you're already subscribed, you know I appreciate you all as well. If you've got a question or comment, leave it down in the comment section. And other than that, thanks for your time. Peace.